Wow, thank you. Thank you. Wow. I said I need some groceries. Wow. 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 Turning your attention today to Luke chapter 5. So good to see everyone here in the house of the Lord. We are so thankful for what the Lord is doing, what he has been doing, and what he continues to do. I believe that God is able to save this city. I really do. Some people think that's naive. Some people think that's audacious I just think it's his will it's not his will that any should perish praise God before I read this text I want to commend to this church I want to commend you for the way that you have embraced this new schedule not everyone has liked this me either is that fair? Is that okay? Pastor Lopez, you've told me not to say it until today. I'm saying it. I want to say something here publicly that I hope everyone will listen clear and will understand. The easiest thing for me would be to do church how we've done church. Because I need to tell you it is very fun to get up and preach to 1,200 people. But God forbid that this thing should ever be more about the way I feel than the heartbeat of God. And I want to please the heartbeat of God. Thank you. You listed off all those service times. Thanks for saying that. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again publicly. It will be my great delight when in Indianapolis, Calvary can say, oh, it's a Monday, you can go to church here on Monday. It's Tuesday, oh, Tuesday, yeah, we got an option. You can go to, it's Wednesday, oh yeah, you can go here or you can go here. It's Thursday, you can go. What about Saturday? Somebody would say, well, you you know, most people can't have revival on Saturday. Don't tell Brother Vite that. Don't tell all our incredible Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters and their, that are a part of this body that we love so very much. How many know we're meant to have a multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-generational church? How many know that he's worthy to be praised on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Praise God. And and I thank God. I thank God for this church. I want to say that publicly. I know some have not been excited about it. And I've waited until today to tell you I'm, I'm not. But I am excited about souls for the kingdom of God. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, we got to be honest. We got to start thinking about the fact we're going to have to have a facility that can hold what God is sending. Uh, That's been talked about here for 20 years. Here's the deal. Here's how I believe it. If it's his will, it's his bill. He still open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us. How many believe like we used to talk about he owns the cattle of a thousand? He's able to provide. He's able to supply. He's able to do it. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let me preach before I preach. Luke 5, it's an incredible, incredible narrative. The Lord won't let me get away from it. It makes sense with where we're going next week. It came to pass, verse 1 says, that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two ships standing, or they were there idle by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them 
and we're washing their nets. The Gospels speak to this. This is the part of the washing, and the other Gospel says they were mending, and there is the intentional work that must be done there at the end of fishing for washing and mending. To many of us, that is understood. We recognize this in the text. You cannot fish tomorrow with a net you will not take care of today. Right? I preached, I preached um, many times over the years a message entitled, New Knots in an Old Net. New Knots in an Old Net. We don't need a new net. We've got a net that works. The gospel works. The mending and the washing was about taking those torn places of the net and reaffirming and making, wait, wait a minute, if we've lost a little bit of integrity in this part of the net, let's shore that up. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this one God repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, infilling of the Holy Ghost, and go and teach them this gospel works. This net works. Amen? But they were washing their nets. Here's what that meant. They were done fishing. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. The people had been pressing him. So he said, man, I got to get out of this crowd. He just walks into Simon's boat. Pushed me out a little bit. And he went out and he started teaching there. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. We've all heard it preached on before. This is one of my favorite places in, in the scripture if, if it shows when a person just doesn't want to do what God says. And, and I don't care how great we are. No matter how holy, how righteous, how obedient you are, we've all been in a place where we got a word and we went, hmm, hmm. And, and Jesus knew he'd been washing. They're tired, they're done. And Jesus said, let down, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, We've toiled all night. Elbow your neighbor and say, it's been a long night. You know why it's been a long night? They caught nothing. You ever go fishing with somebody that just loves to fish and you haven't caught anything, haven't caught anything, and they give you a little smart, elegant remark and they say, that's why it's called fishing, not catching. <laughs> and you look back, you want to say, no, that's why it's called boring. <laughs> I, want to catch, I want to catch something. He said, we fished all night. We've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word, at thy word, get in the boat. Get in the boat. Jesus said, go out again. Here we go. We'll let down the net that we just washed. By the way, in case you missed that, oh God of infinite wisdom. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship. Hey, come help us. Come help us. The Bible says, and they came and filled both ships. So they began to sink it. They begin to sink. Wow. And we know that they're about to, Peter's going to fall down. He's going to say, I'm sinful. I had doubt in my heart. Forgive me. They took up this great draw to fishes. Also, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus said, don't fear. From henceforth, thou shalt catch men. And they brought their ships to land. They forsook all. And they followed him. I don't want to be... Um, I want to be careful with the way I, I say this, but I want to be intentional with my title here today. One of the hardest and maybe one of the toughest. It's not the worst, it's one of the greatest, but it seems like one of the hardest and to many people one of the worst of the four-letter words. That word is help. 
help. Help. Two things I preach today. We need God's help and we need each other's. We need God's help and we need each other's. I want you to lift your voice with me. Woo. Come on, raise your voice in this room and say, God, I need your help. God, we need your help. God, we need your help. And we need the help of the body. God, I tell you as the man that has to preach this word today, I need your help. And I need the help of the body. I need your help. And I need the help of the brothers and the sisters. We ask for your help in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let everybody say amen. amen. God bless you and you may be seated today. We live in a unique day and age. I'm not sure how many families besides me. And when I speak about my family, I'm speaking about my precious, godly, beautiful wife. My wife is in charge of groceries. I'm a nightmare with grocery shopping. I would guarantee I'm not the only man in this room that cannot be trusted in the grocery store. Send a man to the grocery store hungry. And I will tell you that if I go to the grocery store, I'm eating some of it in the truck on the way back <laughs> to the house. And if you don't like that, I don't care. I'm buying something just for the drive. Usually those Dots pretzels. Whew. Feel my help right there. But we live in a day and age where grocery shopping is a little bit different. My wife's got this system down. We do this thing um, where you give your order and then you show up to pick up the groceries. I think they invented this because husbands could not be trusted. And on more than one occasion, my sweet, beautiful, godly, what all words did you tell me to use? I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. She has sent me a text or given me a call and said, by the way, I did a pickup. I need you to let me know when you get there. She will let them know which aisle I am parked in, whether it's the one, two, three, whatever. How many have ever done this call ahead grocery pickup? And then some poor kid making minimum wage. <laughs> that I've got to trust whether or not they got the dots. I've got to, anyway. Comes wheeling it out. And on more than one occasion, my wife has asked me to do the pickup without telling me the size of the pickup. When you have as many kids as we have, there have been many car rides where the groceries are under their feet, on their lap, up by their chest. If you've never had a car ride like that, that's a good car ride. And you want to get in the groceries, but you don't want those kids getting in the groceries. Get out of those groceries. What are you doing? But dad, but dad, nothing. <laughs> but of all these things and all these groceries that we have, there seems to be this universal thing amongst, amongst men. Guys, I'm taking a shot at us today. I don't think it's just men, but it seems to be men for sure. My dear friend, Brother Mitchell, there's something about me that I'm gonna tell everyone in this room that I think many men in this room would agree with. I hate making two trips from the car to the house. Oh, I feel a strong witness in the room. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all these nice recycle bags, these have nothing to do with me. I've never thought about taking recycle bags to the, but bless those who've helped us. 
When I go to getting the groceries out of the car, you made this one a little heavy just to start with. I'm just going to let you know. These were supposed to be light. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Come on, where are my men at? You know what I'm talking about. Babe, can you bring the groceries in? <laughs> yeah, I bring the groceries in. I bring, I bring the groceries in. I bring the groceries Oh, my. How many men besides me? Raise your hand. Come on, you lie, you fry. You know what I'm doing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel great witness in the room right now. I f oh. Don't laugh, you do this to me all the time. All the time you do this to me. Do this to me. All the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. Can you get Now, I'm going to tell you right, I'm stopping. I'm telling you right now, listen. Because there ain't no way I'm getting that Dr. Pepper. And there, is there a man in this room? I'll be honest, what went through my mind, and I've done this in the garage. I've done this right here. Hit the door. Hit the door. Hit the door. Hit the door. You know what I found out? This is why I had kids. <laughs> right. Hey, kids, your mom got groceries. Because if I'm responsible for getting the groceries, Brother Brzezinski, there's something about me. I don't know. I think, it's, I think it's my flesh. I like to do it on my own. But the truth is, the more blessed I get, the less chance I have of doing it on my own. And the more blessed that, the more blessed that we become, I, I hope, here's what I hope. This is my prayer for Calvary. And it's, it's biting me just a little bit, but I'm okay with it because I don't want it to be comfortable for me. I'm praying he gives us a revival big enough we can't handle. That we can't. I don't want to be able to manhandle in one little trip, what he's trying to give, what he's trying to supply. I use this basic little illustration to let you know the greatest part of this is when the kids are home and I say, hey, Carver. <laughs> Kaysen. Even Cadence. Canaan went to college. He can tell you if he's home for the weekend, that dude's carrying groceries. He's doing something. Why? It's meant to help. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, when Jesus shows up this day, they have fished all night long and caught nothing. Nothing. Can't stress this enough. Nothing. Because he was about to teach them a principle. Your efforts without me your efforts without Jesus will always yield less than you desire. But he was about to teach them, if you will let me into the equation, even if it disrupts what is comfortable for you, even when you're going through the motion, even when you're go you know what they were doing? They were doing what fishers had done. It must not have been a good night for fishing. They had done everything they knew to do. And even when they hadn't caught anything, they were washing the net like good fishers because it's, it's what they were taught to do. Even if you're not having success, just keep trusting. Go through the process. Go through the process. Go through the process. And he did not want to fish. And I got news for you. I don't.
don't blame him. I don't blame him. But he said some of the most powerful words. I've preached them time and time again through the, word, through the years. And I can tell you as sure as I'm about to preach them right now, Brother Henderson, I'm going to preach them again. Because sometimes I'm preaching to me and letting other people listen. He said, nevertheless, at, not at my word. If I let my nets determine whether or not I fish, if I let last night's lack of catch determine whether I fish, if I let my emotions determine whether I fish, if I let my crew determine whether I fish, my crew doesn't want to fish, they're tired. My net just got washed. They don't want to go back in the water. I can speak for my net. They don't want to go back. And I know for me, I just got my boat into the, into the shore, everything. We're about to head out. This has been a long. Nevertheless, at thy word. How many have learned through the years when you feel like you've got nothing left, if you can get a word from God? If you can get a word from God, anything can happen. Because at his word, the worlds were formed. At his word, light came into existence. At his word, land and sea separated. At his word, at his word, at his word, at his word. If you're in this place and you've ever been healed at his word, you ought to testify. If you've ever been recovered at his word, you ought to testify. If your family's ever been strengthened, you ought to testify. I'm not asking if you're tired. I'm not asking if you like it. I'm just asking, do you believe in the word? <laughs> Nevertheless, at thy word. Nevertheless, at thy word. And I got a word. We're going to have revival. Our families are going to have a revival. Brother Dozal, I got a word. Prodigals are going to keep coming home. Prodigals are going to keep coming home. I've got a word. Sister Tiller, I've got a word from God that he's going to dry up cancers and he's going to heal bodies because of the power of our prayer. I've got a word from God. I've got a word from God that I don't have some doctor's reports to prove yet, but I'm ready to put my net in the water and get my ship back out into the sea. I'm ready to cast into the deep because I got a word. Wait a minute, prove it. You haven't seen it yet. I can't prove it because I haven't seen it, but I can tell you I got a word from the Lord. And if you got a word from the Lord, let me preach that for a minute. If you get a word from the Lord, it doesn't matter who's a naysayer. It doesn't matter who's a doubter. It doesn't matter who believes in you. Come on, elbow somebody. Tell them I'm getting a word from the Lord. When you get a word from the Lord, your family's going to be saved. It doesn't matter how empty your net is. Woo. There was a little hesitation there, so I'm going to say it again. When you get a word from the Lord that your family is going to be saved, it doesn't matter that you've toiled all night and you've prayed a hundred or a thousand prayers before and you're just trying to wash the net and you're tired and you're bewildered and you're overwhelmed and nobody thinks it's time to fish. But Jesus walked to the shore of your life and said, fish again. Get into the deep and fish Come on, when you get a word from God, you don't care whether they want to fish or not. You say, get in the boat, get in the boat, get in the boat, get in the boat, get in the boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's give him praise in the room. Nevertheless, at thy word. It was a word from the Lord. Somebody needs to hear this word from the Lord. You don't have to live in that addiction. Hmm. You're tired and got an empty net, but I've got a word from the Lord for you right now. You don't have to. If you'll get into the deep. I can feel it even from some in the room. Man, I've heard this before. Get ready. Get ready. Well, I don't, even think, I don't even think Simon Peter had a good attitude. Yeah, but he was obedient. Simon Peter was like a lot of us. 
Who in this room besides me has ever tried to pray? And when you went to prayer, it was hard. Who's ever tried early morning prayer? Awesome. Holy. I was so tired. Went to pray one time. They asked me to pray. This was, I don't know, man, 15 years ago. I was so tired. I was so tired. So tired. And they asked me to pray. I said, God is great. God is great. I prayed traveling mercies. We weren't even going anywhere. True story. Somebody next to me, somebody next to me said, when you said that, I went. Anybody besides me ever just had to do it even when you didn't feel? Just because you knew it was right and it was attached to a promise? I want everybody to be okay with this. He didn't feel like fishing. He was a grown man ready to throw a temper tantrum. I don't want to go fishing. How many kids ever brought this? In? You better pick them groceries. I don't want to go fishing. But he did. And because he did, they're about to have the greatest catch. I've never, I've never paid attention to this in the narrative until I got in it this week and the Lord just kept drawing me back into it. Brother Lopez, I can see the guys in the other little boat, that other little ship. When Peter said, we're going fishing, they said, he told you (laughs) to go fishing. (laughs) They worked together. There were two ships that had been pulled into land. They worked together. Oh, Pete, shut it out. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. I don't know. I don't know how far they got out. I don't know if they were fishing, how far they were fishing out. But I do know this. Whatever they were doing, they weren't catching anything. Hear me now. Because when these boys let down their net, There's this thing that's welling up inside of them. Everyone in the room, Brother Losh, I'm trying to picture how big their eyes got when one old dude on the side started pulling on the net. Pete, I think I'm caught on something. How many in the room you've ever had a big fish on the line? Come on, be honest. How many ever thought it was a big fish and you got it in and you're like, well, it wasn't that big fish. (laughs) Everybody, anybody in the room besides me ever been shamed because you're like, woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a bluegill in. It wasn't, it wasn't that big. It wasn't that big. Every man in this room that's a fisherman has at one point or another said, boy, he was a fighter though. That was a fighter (laughs) right there. That was a. Well, honey, cut that pulling on that net. I don't want a catch that can be handled by one man. <laughs> Grab that net. Grab that net. It's hard. And they're lined across the side of that boat. And they start pulling on it. They start pulling that net in. They start pulling it. And as they're pulling it in, they've never seen anything. There was such a drought of fishes. It was such a catch of fishes. They did what? They did what they were not prepared leaving to do and what the others were not expecting for them to do. They said, help! Help us! 
And the Bible says right here in our narrative of Luke chapter 5 that that other little ship comes over. And it wasn't just a catch of fishes that were so great that it was going to be able to sink one. But the catch, the catch was so great. They had more net than they had boat. They had more net than they had boat. They had more net. I'm going to say it till we get it. We got more gospel than we got church. We got more gospel than we got seats. Why do we need a church in Greenwood and Plainfield and a Spanish service? Why do we need to plant churches around this city and get them into every neighborhood in Indiana? I'm going to tell you why. Because we got a net that's bigger than the building. We got a net that's bigger than the boat. And I know. I want you to hear me right now. I'm preaching my heart and what I believe is the voice of God. It is uncomfortable for me. This boat is everything. But if I'm not catching fish, why do I have a boat? If I'm more impressed with the boat than the catch. Oh, buddy, I feel some bold. I feel the authority of God upon me right now. I want God to know if you got to disrupt us, you disrupt us, but help us get fish in the boat. If we got to call in a, they called another boat, we're calling another service. But I don't want two half full services. I want to feel the boat. I want to feel the boat. I want to feel the boat. I want, to, I want to be just out in the open about this. I want to have a 9.30 service and an 11.30 service that are too full. You know what somebody asked me two weeks ago? We came in here on Wednesday night and it was packed. And they said, what are you going to do with Wednesdays? I said, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yet. <laughs> but if God ever gets us to the place where we got to choose between souls and tradition. Simon Peter, it's not easy. But you're going to have to cry for help. And so I'm standing up here as the pastor today, and I'm saying even though it works against my emotion and it might be a shot to my ego, help! Help us! Help us! Help us! Help us! Help us! Help us! There is a great draw of fishes. There are too many souls, and we cannot get them all unless we get everybody on deck. We need every elder. We need every middle age. We need every young man. We need every young lady. Help. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven right now. Come on, I feel your heartbeat right now. Lift your hands and just tell Lord. Stand with me. I want to keep preaching, but I feel to stop. How many, Brother John, how many, kid, how many students carried this stuff out? 20 students? 20 students carried this stuff out. I didn't feel the weight of it at all until I started trying to prove that I could do it by myself. Whew. Our team was at a conference. The other day, we were at a conference. I honor this church for letting me travel and preach these meetings. And, and uh, I honor you. I know, I understand that it's something to let me be gone. But our team got together and we started praying. I want to say this very clearly. When we started praying, we started praying for our church. And then I asked our team. I said, I want you to start praying for every other church and every other pastor, every other name that you can think of in Indianapolis. 
We started praying for Brother Thomas. We started praying for Brother Long. We started praying for Brother Oliver. Prayed for Tony Oliver. Prayed for Dan Oliver. Started praying for Brother and Sister Sizemore. Started praying for Brother Brian. Started praying, started praying, started praying. I believe it's the will of God that every boat be full. It was not Brother Lopez so that they could celebrate the full boat. Because they don't have hardly any, any boat left out of the water and they're trying to get to land after the greatest catch of their lives. Two boats full of fishes and they get to land and they forsake it all to follow Jesus. So I go on record to let you know we're going to be a church that's about pursuing Christ, not crowd. But I'm convinced that if we'll be obedient to his word, he can give us a catch greater than we can contain. I want you to lift your hands. I'd like to... I'd like to be able to make the appeal today based on what you need in your life, but I'm actually asking you if you will lift your hands and pray for what our city needs. Our city needs a word from God. Our city needs a word. Jesus, you can help us for there to be such a drop of fish, such a catch, such a capture, such an enclosure. but I stand publicly before these people today that you've entrusted me to pastor and I'm speaking to you in front of them telling you we will forsake everything to follow you. We're not going to be impressed with our catch. We're not going to be overly enamored with our boat. But we're going to follow you. We want to please you. I'm going to ask right now, this, uh, our Sunday gatherings take an absolute army. Sunday school teachers, musicians, Sound men, volunteers, guests, greeters, hostess, security, everybody. If you're a volunteer, whether you're a director, a lead, I know that we have a lot gone. It's a holiday weekend. I understand we have many traveling, but many of you are here. You're a teacher, you're a director, you're in front of or behind the scenes, it doesn't matter. You wear a badge or you hold a door or you. I'm even going to ask our musicians. Brother Jordan, just stay on the keys, but everyone else, I want you to just put your instruments down. Brother Anderson, Brother Di, just stay on, on the keys. But everyone else, if you're a volunteer, you serve in any way, I want you to come as close as you can into the altar right now. I know it's going to be tight, but I want you to come as close as you can. You're a volunteer. You're a part of the army. You're a director. You're a leader. You're a... You're a substitute. You're here. You're there. Come as close as you can because there's so many that have to.
Brother Hall. What a group of fishermen. And to everyone else in this room, whether you're a volunteer or not, if you're a part of this church, you might not know this, but your service from your pew, your clapping of hands, your singing of the song, your reaching over to speak to a neighbor, your ability to pray with one with another, you may be the defining difference between someone having a real connection with God or not. But to the hundreds of volunteers that have walked to the front of this building. Whew. There's more fish than we can catch. But I think it can help us. I want you, if you're willing, I want you to lift your hands and I want you to pray a simple prayer. I want you to pray with me. God, help us. God, help us. God, help us. 